mentioned to us the importance, how important it is to be right when it comes to the point guard position. Who or will be, or is that placement for Jamal Shedd in the transfer portal for the point guard? Who will be the replacement? Is, the, is that person in the portal? Yes. What's your timetable for making that decision? Whenever I make it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this there, KG. Uh, we're going to have a good point guard next year. Thank you, Chris. We'll go next to Randy McElvoy from KPRC TV. Randy, please go ahead. Morning, Kelvin. Morning. I know you you talk about how each team has each year has its uh, own identity, and you kind of look back at what that team was all about. When you look at this particular season and this group of guys, um, what are you going to remember most about this particular group as its identity? Well, um, it's tough for me to compare uh, a team to a team uh, in the past. Um, I don't know who said this, but it was it, it really apropos to, to, I think, all coaches with all their teams. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've really enjoyed coaching every team. Um, um, the, the end result of those teams um, have been different for all, but comparison is the thief of joy. Um, you, you know, you've heard that a million times and it, it, it really is, but the, the, I think the adversity of the, uh, 22 team when we lost, um, Marcus and Tremont over a 24 hour period and then lost Kyler Edwards, um, to the uh, bad ankle sprain, and we show up in Philadelphia with, I think, six or seven players. We only had three guards, and one of the three guards was uh, Ramon, who had surgery in November and got cleared the day before we played the last game before Christmas. That was his first game. And then um, uh, we go to Philadelphia. I think our backcourt was uh, Jamal, Tajay Moore and Ramon. Our first guard off the bench was Fabian. Um, then we only had three bigs, Fabian, um, Josh, and uh, Reggie. I think that's right. But, or Jay Watt, I can't remember. Somebody was hurt up front too. Uh, but that that team getting 40 minutes away from the Final Four, they, they stand on their own accomplishments that year. Uh, then this year, um, I think the one I was most disappointed with was at, uh, obviously at the time was Terrence because of the way he was playing. You know, you know, I was watching him in practice, and you know, there's always a point in practice where you can see it's not necessarily an aha moment or here he's getting it. I just could see improvement. He was delivering the first blow. In a, in a lot of our actions, uh, whether it was rebounding defense, blocking shots, getting in the paint, making plays for each other. I, I was seeing things I hadn't seen, and I was excited about, about the next month for him. And then, uh, you know, two days later, his season ends with, with uh, a torn Achilles tendon. Just just sick to my stomach about that. And, then, you know, we, a team I had to figure out an identity after that. Was Terrence was just our first guy off the bench, basically your sixth starter. And then, um, um, you know, we get going in conference play, um, and then you know we're we figured out how to win a game with that bunch. Every team has to figure out how to win the game. None of them will win the way the other team did. They have their own way of doing it. Um, and then when we lost JoJo, that was a double gut punch because um, there's a lot of nice, our best big was JoJo. You know, some nights it was Juan, some nights it was Jay, but a lot of nights it was also JoJo. And uh, when he went down, uh, we didn't have uh, Ramon either. So, no, Ramon came after him, I'm sorry. Um, and it was, uh, 
you know, it's like opening the refrigerator during the depression. There wasn't a lot in there. You know, you look around, you go, what are we going to eat tonight? You know, just, just wasn't a lot off the bench. You know, our five starters, I think we're solid, but, you know, fatigue, foul trouble, those become your biggest uh, enemies. Uh, if you got a deep bench, they become allies. But when you're, you don't have a bench, that's, you know, you're walking on glass. Um, but, you know, we, we just kind of bailing wire and duct taped it through. It was a big boost. And I can't tell you how proud I was of Ramon Walker because he easily could not have played for him to sacrifice with John Houston. Um, John Houston earns, I mean, he, he should get combat pay for what he had to do this year in that locker room, in that training room. Uh, sometimes an hour before practice, I had no idea how many we were going to have at practice today. Because we were, some of the guys that were playing couldn't practice. You know, L, LJ had a, a foot injury that we were nursing. Um, J Wan's knee, certain things he could and couldn't do in practice. Um, JVR was having to practice probably. And then we got to the point where we couldn't practice. We just could do drills. So uh, this this was by far the most um, challenging uh, season starting in December. Um, the year we lost Tremont and Marcus, um, you know, I had to, you know, we say Christmas break. You know, we don't get a Christmas break, you know, it, but – Remember the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We practiced the night of the 25th. Um, it's just coming up with a new plan. And with this team, you had to have another, not a new plan, but an alternate plan of how to handle the bench and who is going to play. You know, like, you know, we had to have a said package. When he was in the game, we could only run these actions because he didn't know the other actions. Um so the challenge of this season was um, uh, the, the most challenging one. And then, you know, the when Jamal went down with the ankle sprain and the, how fluky it was, um, we were playing good. Um, you know, and I, we'd been in those games. You know, probably the hardest team we had to play at the end was Texas A&M because their style of play led to led to us being in a position of foul. And our, our foul trouble in that game was um, was um, ridiculous. Um, but the Duke game, you know, was, was um, we could play our defense because they were running sets. You know, when you spread the floor and just drive it at us, uh, you know, without depth, you, you know, you're very vulnerable. But the Duke game, I thought we were Gardner actions and I think when he went down, they only had six points. Um, but, you know, um, Duke's a good team, really good coach, really good players. Um, but being in the Big 12, we'd seen that. So, but it was uh, just disappointing. I'm, I'm still sick at the stomach um, for Jamal, for our team. You know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to lose a guy, you know, you can survive losing, you know, we survived losing JoJo. We survived losing uh, Ramon at the time. We survived losing Terrence, but we could not survive losing Jamal. We'll go to Chancellor Johnson from KPRC TV. Thanks, Coach. Chancellor, please go ahead. Uh, you know, Kelvin, it's funny that even after you listed all those challenges, you guys still went on to win the Big 12 Championship. So congratulations to, to you guys and Seth once again. Um, my, my question is, a lot of the conversation right now has been on the timing of the transfer portal. For you, obviously, the team was competing in the NCAA, NCAA tournament when that happened. Um, what are your general thoughts about the timing of it? And then with all the guys, with all the senior players entering into the portal, how do you kind of attack that while also, you know, at the time, still preparing for a really important game? What was the last part of your question? With uh, so many players entering into the portal, and with you guys competing for an NCAA tournament at the time, how did you go about attacking that and still uh, preparing your team for the tournament? Um, well, I, I, I never worried about that. 
I just focused on getting my team ready for the uh, um, tournament. Um, you know, I, I don't know what you guys talk about, but I, I, I know, I know who on my team's coming back. So I know who we need, you know, so uh, I don't get my information from anyone. I am the information, you know, it's like uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses. We ain't trying to keep up with the Joneses. We are the Joneses. So um, in terms of attacking the portal, I haven't attacked the portal, you know, it's like last year, you know, I got asked stuff about for this guy and that guy. And, you know, my response is usually, what are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. So for me, um, you know, we may add, obviously we're going to add a point guard. Um, we had one, we may another, add another guy. If we see fit. Um, you know, you always uh, throw a worm on the hook and throw it out there, see what bites. Um, but I'm not fishing in the same uh, pond that everybody else is in. I'm not fishing in, in the pond where there's uh, 260 species of fish. You know, I'm only looking for a guy that can do this, that has this, this, and this. And this, this, and this is the key. <laughs> so uh, I have zero interest in other people's opinion about the players that we should recruit or sign because their 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 opinion is is about as much as uh one of those 10 million cicadas attacking a uh, crop of corn don't matter we'll go to Greg Bailey next here from KTRK TV Greg please go ahead Kelvin, I just want to confirm with you. I mean, you're, you're talking like, has Jamal made his decision? Uh, yeah. I mean, he made a decision a long time ago. With, with regards to uh, next season, has is, is he told you that he's leaving? That's not for me to say. I let my players do their own thing. But I've known exactly, I know exactly what every player is doing for next year. I've known it for a long time. But Ask them. And, and how do the and if I could follow up real quickly, just just the process you go with all of your players, um, is is it once the season ends, or, or are you saying that that's a continuing conversation during the season where you know where players are? That, no, your your question is irrelevant. I know what my kids are doing all the time. They're my kids. You know, it's like like somebody living three blocks over asking you questions about your children. You know. Thank you, Greg. We'll go to Chris Baldwin from Paper City, Houston, please. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Calvin. Um, how much is the the roster in flux, though? Does NBA evaluations play into it, or or, or do you already know for sure what guys like LJ and you know Ju Juwan are going to do? Uh, yes. I, I know. So that doesn't that the NBA uh, process doesn't play into it. Well, I know the ones that are going to get drafted. You know, if I think they're going to get drafted, um, um, you know, I've only had one kid here that I thought should come back. Um, like there was people that thought Quentin should go out uh, after his first year here. I said no. You know, I told his parents that he needs to come back. But I also tell him that we, we've won, you know, understand we won before your son was here and we're going to win after he leaves. So I'm not telling him to stay for us. I'm telling him to stay for him. Uh, and I have not I have not been wrong on those evaluations. Mark, I told Marcus, is, uh, Marcus, you should come back. Uh, Quinn came back and was the first round draft choice. Uh, Marcus came back and was the first round draft choice. Uh, uh, Dejan was very close to leaving after his um, uh, junior year. So Dejan, you need to come back, but you better come back with this, with this, this, and this. That this, this, and this says a lot. There's a lot of unsaid things in that this, this, and this. But uh, he came back. Um, uh, Nate Hinton, um, Nate Hinton made the right decision. I encourage that. He made the right decision for him. 
Um, who was the other ones? Um, but mo most of the kids that I thought should come back came back. The ones that should go uh, left. You know, I've talked to uh, Jamal. Um, um, probably the only one I thought should come back that did not was Armani Brooks. I thought he was the only one. Armani should have come back. It would have helped him. But most, but, but, but you know, most of the kids that that uh, I advise uh, um, have made good decisions, and um, um, you know, I, I don't really have, uh, you know, when I give them advice about their futures, it's out of love for them, not not for the program. You know, their future is more important than our program's future. You, you don't ever make decisions selfishly because this is their life, you know, but I, but I also know what they're capable of doing. Some guys hit their ceiling and they have opportunity to go, they have to go. Some guys go and they can get a guaranteed two way. Uh, then that's probably what they should do. Cause that may be their ceiling. There's some guys that you can get drafted. If you can get drafted uh, at a certain, at a certain point and you can get a guaranteed contract, you have to go. You know, don't don't worry about us. Don't worry about the fans. You know, there's uh, the same people that tell you to come back is going to criticize you the first time you do something wrong. So don't worry about them. You, you make sure you do what's best for you and your family. And if and if uh, and usually they come and we sit down and have a heart to heart. And I always tell them the truth. Um, um, Marcus made the right decision. Quentin made the right decision. Uh, Dejan uh, made the right uh, decision. Um, several of them did. Jamal will make the right decision for Jamal. Um, Houston basketball has nothing to do with his decision. His decision has to do with Eric, Lisa, um, and Jamal, and his brother and sister. That's the only person he has to prove is himself. Uh, uh, please, I'm sorry. The only person he has to please is himself and his family. And don't ever bring anybody else into the mix. That includes any of your coaches or your teammates. You know, that's, there's there's two times you have to be really, really selfish in making a decision. It's for your future and picking your wife or husband. You better make good decisions there. We'll go to Adam Winkler from KTRK-TV. Adam, please go ahead. Kelvin, you've told us before that you watch a lot more NBA than you do college here, and you just say that you're still sick to your stomach about the way your season ended. How will you handle this weekend's Final Four, men's or women's? Will you watch it? Will you avoid it? Um, what's your What's your game plan? I'm going to watch Caitlin Clark, that's for sure. Um, she was uh, – she's ridiculous, isn't she? She's fun to watch. <laughs> Um, um, Jamal, Jamal is, uh, um, he and I are getting some awards and, you know, I, I got a call. I, I, I don't usually go to final four. So I haven't been to a final four, uh, other than the one we played in in 21 since 2006, maybe seven. I, I mean, I just don't like going. Uh, no matter what, you know, um, my perfect final four weekend would be Kellen and Tanya going to the game and me keep me and Karen keeping Maisie and uh, Kylan for four days. I'd much rather do that. I have no interest in going to watch any games. If I want to watch it, all I got to do is punch the remote, right? Um, but um, because, because of the, the, um, Gravity and the um, the awards um, that we're getting, uh, mostly Jamal. Um, I want to be there to support him. So I've got an itinerary that they made out for me where the awards will be announced and presented um, for uh, and, and 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 I'll be there for that. Um, so 
I'll, I'll go to Phoenix if it were not for Jamal getting these awards. I doubt I'd go. Thank you, Adam. We'll go to Joseph Duarte from the Houston Chronicle. Joseph, please go ahead. Morning, Kelvin. Morning. Kelvin, going back uh, to the beginning with uh, Galen and then Dejan and then Jamal, uh, each one of them, were, obviously they were different. Uh, whether it's the development aspect of you get a guy at that position that you can bring along and, and develop like Jamal or go to the portal and maybe have a year or two, is there a common denominator that you look for or specifically with the portal that you need to have in a guy that maybe you won't have for as long that you need to, to sort of stress certain things uh, sooner rather than later? No, for, for uh, being a point guard in our program, um, you know, two of, two of the things that, that I look for is, uh, is just things that we'd all want from our children, you know, to, to be a good person. I think it's important. Um, if you're a low character dude, we're, you know, we're not going to bring a low character dude in here because our culture is too important. We're not going to bring anybody who's going to screw the culture up. Um, then maturity uh, is important. Being able to handle adversity is part of both of those. Um, you know, Galen had some rough days when he was a soft freshman and a sophomore. Uh, um, of the three, uh, all three of them had certain uh, characteristics in, in common in that they had good intangibles. Um, and trying to, to evaluate, you know, I, I I do evaluate that. I look for that. You know, it's like um, when a kid comes up, when one of our bigs come on campus, um, you know, for some reason, I always look at, uh, when I'm watching a kid play, one of the first things I look at is his, um, how long his arms are. Been doing that for a long, long time. First time I saw uh, Jojo Tugler, I said, God, that kid can tie his shoes without bending over. Um, but those, those kids play way bigger than their, their athleticism and their wingspan uh, allows them to be way bigger than they want. You know, um, but that point guard position, a, a lot of uh, um, character things I think are important. That's a leadership position. Galen, Galen was a uh, outstanding leader, but he wasn't as a freshman. Um, very inconsistent as a sophomore, outstanding as a junior and senior. Um, then um, Dejan. Dejan. Dejan was unique. Um, uh, all three of them were extremely bright, very smart. Galen was extremely, extremely smart. Uh, Dejan's basketball IQ and, and how smart he was as a human being was off the charts. Um, Jamal, same way. All three uh, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly intelligent people. Um, uh, great leaders, all those things. So um, the kids that we're recruiting or the kid that we're recruiting, or whatever, or how you want to uh, put it, has to be really good in those areas. Um, but I don't compare them. Yeah, so I, I'm not looking for another Jamal. That guy's not out there. I'm not looking for another Deja. That guy's not out there. I'm not looking for another Galen. I'm looking for this kid. He he runs his own race. He'll do it the way he does it, and that'll be good enough for us. We'll go to Starnes Leland from the Cougar. Starnes, please go ahead. Good afternoon, Coach. Um, Good afternoon. With the – just what are your thoughts on, you know, the Big 12 Mexico game next year getting postponed, and when did you find that out? Ecstatic. I'm ecstatic. Although, uh, uh, having been to Mexico City, it's got the best street food in the world, by the way. Um. You don't have to go to a five-star restaurant. They got four and five-star restaurants and those are not trucks. I mean, that place is unbelievable. Uh, 
but no, I was never a big fan of that. Um, but um, our 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 commissioner, <laughs> our our commissioner is um, unbelievable. The Big Twelve is lucky to have um, for him to come in and start just popping firecrackers and lobbing cherry bombs and. Um, I mean, that dude is that dude is a bag of fireworks. I love him. I mean, I absolutely love Brett Yormark. And you know, um, Bill and I talked about this uh, two or three times. Um, you know, it's taking a home game away from us, and you know, this NIL thing is real. You know, a lot of our a lot of fan bases think it's a year to year thing. No, it's it's every year. You, know, you have to start over with the new roster. And I think the most important thing for uh, coaches uh, today is um, man, how do you manage your roster? But I've been doing this for, I've been managing this roster for 10 years. Next year's roster is just a continuation of this year's roster. It doesn't start over for me. We managed, we, the, the roster for next year was put in motion three years ago. So, um, being able to manage your roster, being able to build your program today, I think is the hardest thing we do in coaching. And it's because of the rules that's been put in place. Every rule that's been put in place has been pro student athlete, but a lot of those rules are anti-program building. And that's what makes these jobs harder and harder and harder. Thank you. We'll go to Chris Gardner next, please. Chris, please go ahead. Coach, you, you've been at Houston 10 years. This is your 10th season officially, the start of your anniversary. Just reflect on it these 10 years. Is there anything that you haven't accomplished in terms of program building that you still want to accomplish? Um, well, I don't look at things the way most people do. And, um, um, and a good part of that is I have zero interest in most people's opinion about what I look at. I know what I look at. I know what's important to me. Um, I get up uh, every morning uh, excited, appreciative, and fortunate uh, to be in the position I'm in. You know, I have an incredible job. I'm able to uh, support my family. Um, I'm able to do something that I love to do. I keep it very basic. I mean, I'm lucky. Um, uh, I'm appreciative of the University of Houston for giving me this opportunity. Um, I work every day to make this program uh, the best it can be. Um, uh, you know, hiring staff is, uh, your, your success will be you've got to know how to hire in this business. You know, there's a lot of strength coaches out there, but you've got to hire one of them. Um, I got lucky when I inherited John Houston. Uh, I thought I had the best trainer ever in Alex Brown at uh, Oklahoma, and he was unbelievable. But but the good Lord has blessed me with, I think, two, two, two of the best trainers in the history of college athletics, and Alex Brown and John Houston. Um, uh, Alan Bishop, um, when I sat down and interviewed him, um, I think I was looking at two or three guys. I knew he was the one, um, and we hit a home run there. Uh, my assistant coaches, um, uh, I don't even know whether I should say this, but I'm, I'll, I'll just say it vaguely. I had two guys on my staff offered head coaching jobs in this this past offseason, hell, in the last 10 days. Um, and I encourage them both to <clears throat> do what's best for you. You don't do what's best for the University of Houston. Um, coaching staffs come and go. But uh, the fact that we've been able to keep our coaching staff intact, <clears throat> I think is pure luck. Just like you've got to have a lot of luck to advance in the tournament. Um, you got to have a lot of luck in maintaining your staff. But the secret sauce to our success is 
than the consistency of our staff. Um, everybody is hired here has some kind of connection to me. Uh, our former managers, I've got former managers that are head video coordinators at two different NBA with two different NBA teams. So they know that. So when managers apply for managerial positions for us, uh, they know the background and success our manager. My head video guy right now, Matt McDonald, was a manager. My administrative assistant, uh, to me personally, was a uh, former manager. Um, his assistant is a former manager. Um, KC was the video coordinator. Now he's assistant coach. Um, Kellen, Kwanis, Hollis, Goldie, my guys. Uh, Lauren, who's who's kind of the eggs in the uh, cake. I bet some of you guys didn't even know a cake wouldn't rise and maintain its form without putting eggs in it. No, you didn't. You didn't know that. Uh, you learned something today. But Lauren is the uh, eggs in our cake. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got a, a special mix of people here that um, has been incredibly important in the growth of this program. Um, sometimes I think the old, old head coach gets way too much credit for anything because our, our staff deserves a ton of credit for uh, our success with everything they do. Um, <clears throat> we've learned to never take no for an answer. Um, uh, we've learned that uh, anything's possible. You know, um, I'm always pushing the envelope on what we need and how to grow. Um, um, if you're not going to ask me what we need to do to make this program better, then I'm going to go tell you what we need to do. Um, but the consistency of our coaches tax, I think, reflects the consistency of our program. You know, it's hard to win. It's hard to go to the tournament once. It's really difficult to go back to back years. Um, for us to sustain the level that we've had, uh, I think speaks to our culture and the kind of kids that we fruit that, that we think can fit it. So, um, but there's areas we have to get better in. We, we've got to get better. And I think we will. We're going to work all off season. Um, you know, once we get our roster uh, completed, um, now we get completed soon enough. Um, once we get our roster completed, um, we, we're going to work as hard as we can, uh, whether it's in conditioning, um, the weight room, skill development, position development, team development, uh, all those things. We'll evaluate areas we think we need to get better in, and we'll attack those areas and, and try to be the best we possibly can be. But uh, you're, you're, you're always, you're always uh, climbing the mountain, man. You're always climbing the mountain. Um, you don't stop. Don't look behind you. Just keep climbing. And that's what we do with this program. I have time for a few more questions. We'll go to Chancellor Johnson from KPRC TV. KPRC TV. Chancellor, please go ahead. Kelvin, when we look back on the career of Jamal Shedd here in Houston, what should people remember about him? Um, that as, as good a basketball player as you think he is, uh, he's a better person. Heart of gold. You know, uh, I learned so much about these kids, the, you know, little things, little incidents that they were involved in on senior night at my house before our last home game. Because I can get emotional. This was a box of Kleenex night. Um, I went downstairs in, uh, in, um, in our house and I called Karen. I said, Karen, can you give me a box of Kleenex? And she said, it's that bad. I said, yeah, it's that bad. Uh, so I went climbing back up the stairs and just the, the thank yous um, that I heard them say about each other. You know, the, uh, uh, the things that Jamal does that nobody knows about, uh, that I didn't know about, that I learned that night was incredible. Um, his, his uh, you, know, I, I, you know, we all do things that nobody knows about. 
right? We don't know who's having a bad day or having a good day. We don't know what your demons are. We don't know what's in your closet. You know, we don't know what's going on with you. Um, that's why I, you, you try to, that's why it's important to have a sense of humor in life. You know, you learn not to take yourself too serious. It's, it's just not, none of us are that big a deal when you get down to it, but it's important. It's important to help other people. You know, something that we, that, um, you know, we're, we're constantly pushing is, that's the difference in playing together and playing for each other. That's the big mantra that we have. But nobody embodied that more than Jamal. Um, he's the best I've had at that since I've been here. Now, I'm not going to rank players, but in terms of uh, the impact he's had on his teammates, I think that that's, to me, that will be Jamal's legacy. You know, being a first-team All-American, uh, um, uh, Big 12 player of the year, defensive player of the year, I mean, he's going to get some more awards that have not been announced yet that I have to be at over the weekend. Um, I mean, those it's hard to get one up. Hell, it's hard to make the team. <laughs> and for him to uh, be at that level among the very, very best. And then represent our city, our university, and our basketball program with the uh, class and dignity. Um, there's, some, there's some guys I would... Uh, grind my teeth if you guys when you guys interview him but with Jamal I always knew that he was going to be a great ambassador uh, for the program and um, um, but you know from day one when I started recruiting Jamal uh, Kellen identified him I didn't like him I said no no so I think Kellen had a little conversation with Jamal and said uh uh, Chief's coming back to see your next game. Here's what I need you to do. Uh, well, whatever he said to him worked because I liked him after that, after that one. Um, but you know, the growth he's made is why you coach in the first place. You know, you say, well, coach, do you want to win this or win that? You really think that's why I got into this profession. Then you don't know what coaching is. That has nothing to do with what I got into coaching for is, is to, uh, recruit guys like Galen Robinson um, and uh, Marcus Sasser, um, um, J. Juan Roberts. Uh, you know, I'm looking at these teams, but uh, I, I remember Chris Harris's journey. I remember Dejan and Bryson Gresham's journey. How many times Justin wanted to to leave because it wasn't working out, and he stayed, and and the success he had. Um, Josh Carlton was a uh, overweight kid at dinner the bench that was basically forgotten about. Came here in June and dedicated himself to our culture and our program and the things that we do and, and left here as um, arguably the best player in the conference and, and um, making a bunch of money and having a great career overseas. That's why you coach. That's, that's why I coach. That's why I got into profession. I, I didn't know winning at this level was possible. Um, but I think when it happens organically, instead of you planning it, it's 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 when it means the most that it, it, you cherish it more. But I, I got into this because I know the impact my dad had on those kids that played for him in little old Pembroke, North Carolina. I, I know the Im impact he had on that community. And I know how his players looked up to him. Uh, that's That's what got me into coaching is the impact you can have on another person's life and see them go on and, um, you know, come back and bring their children. You meet their children, you meet their wife, you you, you see the success they're having uh, after they leave. And, and for them to say, um, coach, one of the things I talk to my kids about every day is uh, attitude and effort, you know, for them to remember those things and apply them uh, to their daily life. I get more out of that than any win that I could ever have. And if that, um, um, if that sounds corny, then it's corny. I don't care. Um, but that's what I love about coaching. And when, when those, uh, um, I wish every young coach could write down why he got into the profession and just put it on a note card 
don't don't type it in your phone. Don't put it into your laptop. Just write it down on a three by five index card and fold it up, tape it to the bottom of your uh, pull out desk, pull out drawer in your desk and just leave it there. Then ever so often pick it up and read it. And don't forget that. Don't forget why you got into the profession. Don't let other people influence you. Don't let other people's opinion influence you. You, you coach for your reasons. And you let other people um, um, guess or comment or, or try to figure out what you who you are and what you do. Nobody knows who you are or what you do, but you. You know what your reasons are. You know why you decided to get into this. And um, um, I've been away from my phone. I, I just got out of a long meeting. And so I've been away from my phone for a few hours. When I go back to my phone, either a call a text or an email is guaranteed to be from a former player from once from one of the schools I've coached at. I don't go very long without hearing from. So that's been a, think about all the teams you've had. I've had 35 of them. That's uh, what? Well, almost 4,000 kids, right? That's just on the 45 teams. Um, um, and then when you add NBA teams to it, that's, that's a, that's a lot of people to have your number, <laughs> either have your number or your email or, or some way. I don't have anything but that. Um, not a Twitter guy. If you see me tweet something, I'll, I'll, I'll type something out and then I'll have Lauren do it. I'm ashamed to say I don't even know how to do it. Um, I guess if it's important, I, I would learn, but I don't think that's important to me at least. Um, I'm not a text and I do all that stuff, though. Um, so, yeah, co coaching is is um, I, I I love I love developing young people. And then I really, really, really get my greatest joy from seeing their success. And um, uh, Jamal has so many hard days. You know, he was he was full of it when he got here, but he left here a man. And there's a there's a large, 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 huge value in that is, is seeing him uh, uh, where he is today. We'll go to Joseph Duarte, please. Joseph, go ahead. Kelvin, the time that you spent with Cordell and Jacob this year, uh, how did you like their, their progress and, and what excites you about Chase and Mercy coming in? Um. Well, Cordell broke both of his wrists, uh, which was, I think, a shock to us all. Uh, John Houston came up and said, Coach, I've never seen this in all my years. You know, when a kid comes in, you know, he, we do a full body scan. You know, we do MRI, X-rays. You know, you, you, just, you just never know, you know, because we're getting ready to put him through something that if they've got a, a health issue, you want to know about it, make sure that that – we're not endangering them because you never lose sight of the fact that they are somebody's son. Uh, I know a lot of people forget that uh, for their own personal benefit. But uh, when we did Cordell's x-rays, he had fractures in both of his wrists. So I think the first surgery uh, recovery, seven weeks later, we did the second surgery. So he was out almost to um John could give you a date I think it was out to December so he he was slow he started picking up some steam though in February and March um um Jacob is probably a lot further along um Jacob's gonna be a good player I don't need to say anything else because people um read way too much in simple statements but Jacob is, uh, uh, he's smart, he's left-handed, he can run fast, really fast. Uh, he's got a good second jump. Um, and he's, um, he's going to be a good player. Uh, Mercy, Mercy had a great year. Um, I, I I wouldn't give you two wooden nickels for any of these postseason all-star games. I, 
That stuff doesn't mean anything to me. I don't think we've ever had a kid. I don't think I've ever recruited a kid that was in any, any of those games. Yes, I did. Andrew Lavender. He was in the McDonald's game with uh, LeBron James. That must have been in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Cleveland, Ohio. Because I watched it. I said, and that's when he wore those baggy shorts. He was only 5'7". I think his shorts were 5'3". Barely see his ankles. He was so short. Hell of a player, though. Um but Mercy had a really good year. Um, uh, Mercy's excited about being here. I, I, he was he was one uh, Sunday uh, after or Saturday. You know, you walk around like a zombie when the season's over. Um, um, I think I gained fifteen pounds between Saturday and Sunday, eating everything in the refrigerator. I didn't know what to do with myself. But um, I got a nice, uh, just a very mature, very appreciative text from Mercy. Uh, just loved it. Um, Chase, text with uh, Chase uh, this weekend as well. Um, you know, ma just making sure those guys, uh, you know, your season's over, but you, you better stay in shape. Here's what's coming. You should get here in June. And that'll be here before you know it. Next month is May, you know, and right around the corner. We'll be in June before you know it. Um, so excited about Chase and Mercy. They got to get in here, get in the system, and start getting uh, culturized. And then um, Jacob um, said, and um, Cordell, same with those guys. They, you know, that next year they'll be competing for uh, playing time. This year they weren't. You know, it's like, uh, I think I've only had two freshmen that I thought were good enough to help us win the game once they got in there. Difference in playing time. A lot of guys play can't help you win the game. You got to get them out before they hurt you. Um, uh, the one that surprised me the most was, was probably Marcus Sasser. Um, Marcus had a really bad summer. Well, he, uh, let me rephrase that. He really he had a summer where he really struggled. Uh, <laughs> his mother had one of the greatest lines ever you know marcus kept calling and it was hard and i was hard on him too but marcus needed that and i especially hard on him one week um he called his mother wanting to come home and marcus got all this ink on him all these sayings his mother uttered one of the greatest lines ever she said marcus you better start reading what you got on your body uh, you keep wanting to come home, but that stuff you got on your body and, and them guys don't quit. You better start reading that and start understanding it. So uh, that was a great line. Every time I, every time I talked to her, I said, um, sometimes we say things, the wrong things at the wrong time. That was as good a right thing at the right times I've ever heard. She knew she, that was her son. It's like you guys ask me what these kids are going to do. They're my sons. Do you not think I know what they're going to do? They're my sons. I'm not writing about them. I live with them. They're under my house. I feed them. I eat with them. I know exactly what all I'm going to do at all times. There is no speculation between my ears on anything. I have time for two more questions, and that will be it. We'll go to Chris Baldwin first, and then Dayon Dunlap for the final question. Chris, please go ahead. Kel Kelvin, you, you said you're in your last lap of your coaching career, but you don't know where you are on, on that lap yet. Do you, do you think about that more e each off season? And when, when will you, will you sort of know? Um, I haven't thought about it this off season. I've been too pissed off to think about that. Um, um, no, I still got a fire in my belly. Um, I know I know exactly where we are uh, as a program, and I and I spend my time um, uh, meeting with like we we met Sunday morning. I know it was Easter. I made sure that I wasn't interrupting anybody's church services. Uh, but we met Sunday about uh, um, you know, when you have the kind of relationships we have with our players, again, we, there's, we know exactly what's going on. That's why you have relationships. Um, 
but um, you know, with with our team, is is how do we how do we improve? How do we get better? And um, and that has to come starts with us as as a coaching staff. And so I, I I like to push the envelope with our guys, shake it up, making sure that we're all thinking outside the box a little bit. Sometimes your best ideas are inside the box. By the way, you know don't don't ever overestimate that box. You know if you live outside, if you if you're constantly living outside the box, then you don't have one. Um, but um, you know challenging, I, I like challenging people. I challenge Bishop. Uh, I don't challenge John, uh, but I challenge Bishop. I challenge all our guys. You know, get better, man. Bring me some ideas. What's other people doing? And so that's why I'm all, that's why we did that second floor. I saw what Clemson and LSU and uh, Alabama and Georgia were doing in their recruiting wars. I said, you know, that's what we need. We, we need that. So we went and got it. And now the biggest thing now is uh, is uh, this NIL thing and the transport portal uh, thing. Um, you know, I don't I don't worry about the the portal. I just worry about you know group of kids I like. I think would fit here would help us get better. I focus on those, um, and then I don't I don't really spend a lot of time worrying about that stuff. I, I really don't spend a lot of time thinking about it because. We kind of got it under control. Last question of the day. We'll go to Dayon Dunlap, please. Dayon, please go ahead with your question for Coach Sampson. Hey, Coach Sampson. You, you referenced knowing your players and having the conversation with them throughout the season in regards to their plans. Is that the same approach that you have with your coaches? You just referenced within, I guess, two weeks, them kind of getting some offers. I'm not sure the timeline with coaches and openings, but you kind of have that same approach of knowing what potential coaches would can leave and plans for the guards of future and coaches and other players that's in the pipeline, interesting to becoming coaches and joining your program. Yeah. I like helping guys reach their goals. Uh, day on. Um, um, when the right job comes about, um, you know, if you're a coach at this level, you probably have an agent or somebody that's a representative that, uh, uh um, We'll know about something before it becomes uh, public, maybe. Um, but, but for me, um, you know, when they come in and say, Coach, I've been approached by this school, they always say, what, what do you think? And then I give them an honest answer. Um, um, if I think it's um, the right one, but they have to make their decision. They're not going to do anything based on what I say. I just give a, an opinion. And then it's their, it's their whatever they want want to do, but I would never hold them back, because um, that's why you get into this profession. You know, um, I was a head coach in college when I was twenty five years old. I was a head coach in the Pac ten when I was thirty one. I was a head coach in the Big Twelve when, when I was thirty seven. So, um, but those were opportunities that, at the time those opportunities came up, I didn't have anything. And um, um, they weren't, those those schools, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Had, had those been great jobs, uh, they would have never hired me. They would, they would have hired somebody really good, but they weren't, at the time, they were jobs that probably a lot of really good coaches wouldn't consider. So um, I, I just, um, I got the stuff at the end and, you know, I was, I was fortunate, lucky enough to um, do something with them and move on. But my, my guys saw, uh, I got several guys on my staff that probably should be head coaches somewhere else. Those are certainly good enough. 